Week 4, we start off with mechanics. Here we go. Back judge, you got to assume some of the responsibilities of the umpire when the umpire moves in the offensive backfield. We're looking at number 21 here, pre-snap. Where's his right foot? It's clearly in front of the goal line. What do we say? Toes on the line, not foot in front of the goal line. This is an automatic flag. If we went to review, we would easily confirm it on this shot alone. 21's got his right foot clearly in front of the goal line. We need a flag on the ground. Our back judge is set up on the goal line. I also want you to watch our wing at the top of the screen, the 25-yard sprint to finish the play. Look at that. He's definitely short. Back judge coming in, and look at the extreme hustle by our wing official at the top of the screen. That's what we want to see. We don't take plays off. We don't walk. We run everywhere. Nice work. Let's watch our coach here. He wants a timeout. Our wing is focused on the line of scrimmage, but look at this. Our back judge got a wider view of the field, understands the coach wants a timeout, recognizes it, and acknowledges it. Charging in with air in the whistle, waving his arms, killing the clock. Coaches, note, go ahead and charge the official when you want that timeout. We'll give it to you. And you can hear it here. The play did get off, but we killed it. We will give you the timeout. We will not put a sideline warning on you. Charge the official. Get that timeout. Make sure we see you. Good job, back judge here. Okay, what's the situation here? We've got fourth and two or less, so we know the belt reduces. Good job by the umpire letting him know the backer. Fourth and two or less, the belt reduces. What do the wings need to do? They need to crash. Do we see crashing here? Tight play at the line to gain. Here they come. If you've got to go around, the players go around them. We crash and we sell whatever we have. Excellent work by the crew knowing the rules. Fourth and two or less. The belt reduces wings on a tight play. You better crash. All right, let's watch our mechanics. Let's watch our wing here. He's going to have the run coming right at him. What's he going to do? He chooses to retreat into the backfield. Good move here. Remember, safety. Then the quarterback's going to run, and he's going to slide. And where do we spot this ball? Where he starts the slide. About the 23-24, so a good spot here by the crew. Let's watch the umpire. you got two backers aligned at the back of the box on the belt. The right one has declared. You don't necessarily have to point, but uh, here, just raise your right arm. It lets the offensive lineman know which backer is coming for him. Good umpire mechanics. We saw this last week. We'll see it again this week. What the heck? Is that three yards? Nope. Better focus is required. Referees, three yards outside the guard. Umpires, when you move into the offensive backfield, three yards outside the guard. This is about three yards. I don't know. This is, well, it's more than three. Let's get this stuff corrected. Rule school is next. Here we go. We haven't seen this this year. We talked a lot about it last year. Watch the defensive end. He drops into coverage, and he's going to commit illegal contact. There it is. We got to have a flag. Now, back judge has two keys here. One on the top's not really threatened. Tough get, but you got to get that illegal contact by a defender not aligned. The defensive end certainly can jump, I mean, drop back into coverage, but he cannot contact a receiver. Now, umpires, you got to get this two out of your peripheral. What have we told you last year? Carries through this year. When you see one of those defensive ends drop into coverage, you've got to keep an eye out on it because for all intents and purposes, every time we see them do it, they're going to blast the receiver. So this is not all on the back judge. Umpire's got to see this too out of, out of his peripheral. Got to get this. Illegal contact by a defender not aligned. Inside the belt, we could challenge it. Remember, anytime we have ICT inside the belt, it's challengeable. So if we miss this, we could create this in review really quickly. Here we're in scrimmage kick formation. Are we in a legal formation? Look at our DB there. Scrimmage kick formation. This is legal because there's no belt in scrimmage kick formation and he doesn't penetrate. So that's good and this is a legal formation. You'll see this on a quiz and I guarantee at least 20 people will get this incorrect. But this is a legal formation. There is no belt in scrimmage kick formation. 
Here's a quiz question, test question. Yet 15 or 20 are still going to get it wrong. That's how we know you're not watching tape. Free kick hits the top of the dasher board. What is the ruling? Where are we spotting this ball? You're going to see this in a quiz, and I guarantee you 15 of you will continue to get this wrong. Let's listen in to the referee. The ball hit the top of the dasher wall. Therefore, it'll be placed at the five-yard line, first and 10, Northern Arizona. Contrary to a false start we saw a few weeks ago, what's he do here? Is this visible to the eye? Can we see this in real time, a flinch? We do. It's a flinch, and it's before the snap. We need to shut this down as a false start. Watch the flinch. It's before the snap. And if we went to review, we could create this. Why? Because it is visible to the eye at regular speed. He definitely flinches, and it is early. So if we went to review, we would create it. There it is. But we got to get this live. And this is different from the one we saw recently on the training tape where the crew created a flinch false start because the flinch was simultaneous with the snap. This is clearly early. It jumps out. Again, we just watch it in real time. Look at it closely. Does it jump out? It certainly does. And we would create the false start if challenged. Now I want you to watch one of the best calls of the season so far by the back judge here. The game's almost over. They're going to throw, be throwing up like a Hail Mary. Look at the cheap shot there at the two-yard line. Back judge sees it, puts it down. He's not in a hurry to get out of here. Hey, the game's over. No. He's focused. He sees it. This is complete crap by this defender. Cheap as can be. Put a flag on the ground and we do. That's a plus one. Great work. We talk about getting these players lined up legally. These two wing officials know what we're talking about. They each have a flag down on the ground. This is not a warning. I don't care if it's on the first play of the game. This is egregious. This needs to be flagged, and it was. Great get by the two wings here. Get these players lined up legally. Remember, what happens if this turned out to be a pick six and we didn't have a flag down? we got a big problem, right? When they're this big, put the flag on the ground, as the two officials do here. This is the first play from scrimmage in this game, and let's watch our receiver. you got to be kidding me. What's he do? He turns and points at the pursuing defender, and the back judge is all over this. Live ball taunt just cost this team a touchdown because we are taking the points off the board. Excellent focus by our back judge. We have a zero tolerance policy towards taunts, and you got to be kidding me. Just cost this team a touchdown. we got to have our heads on a swivel. We can't miss obvious late vicious hits like this. Third player in just decides to blow the runner up. First hit puts the receiver down in the wall. Second hit, eh, okay. But here is our player. He's got the brick in his hand, and he delivers a late, vicious hit. Look at that. Got the brick in his hand, boom. And we have two eyes, four eyes, six eyes, looking in on this, and no one wants to flag. We've got to be better than this. Here he comes. Got the brick in his hand looking for trouble. We need a flag. Next up, a little bit of replay challenge reviews. Now remember, when that coach calls timeout and asks the challenge, he's got to go through with it. And if he doesn't, we take his timeout and challenge away. If he challenged something that is not challengeable by rule, we also take his timeout and challenge away. The coaches need to know what is challengeable. Here we go. Here's a tight play in the end zone, rule to touchdown. Note to the coaches, if you want to challenge a play, you need to sprint into one of the officials and call time out, okay? Dropping the flag late, we may not see it, so we're not going to get you for a sideline warning when you charge at an official anytime you want to call time out. So if you want to challenge this, run at official, call time out, and drop the flag. Now, the ruling on the field here is a touchdown. Let's say we challenged the play. What do we got? Certainly looks 
Looks like we have a catch there, doesn't it? Great play by the receiver. Looks like he pulls it in. Does he lose it when he turns over? Let's go to the other shot and see what we have. So we go to the arena feed, which is always a better shot than we, what we get from VidSwap. And in fact, most arenas will show us these excellent shots like this. But what do we have here? We have a receiver going to the ground in the process of catching a ball. So what does a catch have to be when he's going to the ground? All the receiver needs to do is maintain control throughout the process of contacting the ground. On the first shot, certainly looks like it. And here, we would confirm the ruling on the field of a touchdown. He pulls it in, contacts the ground. He maintains control of the ball throughout the process of contacting the ground. So we would quickly confirm the call on the field of touchdown. What a play by this receiver. Here's another play where we have a receiver going to the ground, except for the ground is the wall here. And as a receiver going to the ground, as opposed to being an upright receiver, how does he complete the process of the catch? By maintaining possession of the ball throughout contact with the ground. And that is what he does here. The wall is the ground here. The, uh, the uh, receiver controlled the ball, turned, and hit the wall when it was stripped out after he contacted the ground which is the wall. This is the catch. What made this such an excellent call is the mechanics of the official. And here's the uh, good TV shot, YouTube shot. We're going to see the receiver going to the ground. He makes the catch. There the ball is stripped out. And what is the mechanical signal? As soon as our wing official sees the catch, he maintained control in the process with the ground right there. It's stripped out late. The dead ball signal goes up. We have a catch. That's a superb call. Great mechanics. Beware the creeper. Here he comes. Creeping inside the belt. He's inside the belt. There's the snap. Is he aligned? Even from this angle, we can see he's not. He's on the numbers. He's over here. Got to be a pre-snap read by our wing at the bottom of the screen. We talked about it last week. When the creeper is creeping, high alert. He's inside the belt, and remember alignment occurs at the snap. There's the snap. He's not aligned. What are we going to do in review since we didn't have a flag down if it were challenged? Let's take a look. And in review, there's our creeper, right? All we got to do is go a couple frames. We're going to stop it at the snap. Alignment occurs at the snap. We're looking at the ball. There's the snap. And even from this camera parallax, we can see there is no alignment and we would create the foul. Remember, alignment occurs at the snap, so we're looking for the ball movement, right? When is the ball moving? It's snapped. There is no alignment. He gets over too late. We could create the foul in review. On this play, we're going to have a call for an illegal outside blitz. Is it? It is not. And if we went to review, what would we see? So in review, what are we going to do? We're going to try to set our lines of demarcation as best we can. Remember, the outside edge of the offensive guard is the edge of the alley. Let's watch where the backer goes. The camera's not going to move, so we got a good thing here. Look at that. Does he ever go outside the edge? I know that's a big, fat, yellow line, but we want these big, as we're going to see in the next play. Here, he's dancing down the line. So we would take this call off. We would reverse the call on the field. This is not an illegal blitz that we would want called. And here's the contrast play. Let's watch backer number 44. He's going to, is this an illegal outside blitz? We're looking at that offensive guard shoulder, right? Does he go outside of it? Man, he clearly does, doesn't he? And we did not have a flag down for an illegal outside blitz. Just a quick glance. We see the left guard's shoulder. We're watching 44. Man, he's way out to the numbers. So the uh, offense challenged the play, and we went to review. And let's look in review what we have. So in review, what do we want to do? We first want to set the, with our line of demarcation. Remember, the alley is the outside edge of the guard's shoulder. So if the DB goes outside that, we're going to have a penalty for an illegal blitz. So let's remove them. Note that marking. And I tell you, I've seen some replay people bring in straight edges or sides of a file folders to put lines of demarcation on the DV sports screen. But... Uh, 
Here, we know where the outside edge of the guard is, right? His shoulder, we know where the alley is. Let's watch where the DB goes. He's going to cross, he's going to go into the numbers. Look at that. That is big, right there. He's out at the numbers. We knew where the alley was, the edge of the alley. So this is an easily done creation of illegal blitz. So know the difference between on the edge or when he blatantly violates the rule here and he's a yard outside because our lines of demarcation were well inside the numbers and our DB, our blitzer, i.e., he's well outside the numbers. We would create the foul and the referee did here. Good job. Real tough play, but we got to think about it. Wings got his key across the field. We want to watch our DB here. He's going to step inside the belt. Is he aligned at the snap? Our wing can never make that call. He doesn't have the angle. Back judge needs to help. He's got a lot of other things going on, and this is tight. So if we went to review, what are we going to do here? We're going to stop it at the snap. We'll get in a little closer. Let's stop it right at the snap. There's the snap. And we do not have the direct north-south shot that we want. Our camera's coming from an angle, so it's going to push it to the side a little bit. And right here, I'm not sure we have enough to create the foul. So whatever the call was on the field, we would stand it. When we're thinking about it, is it, is it, is it not, is it, is it not, that tells you right off the bat we have a stands. So we'd stand this in this situation if challenge is too tight to create. The final six or seven minutes of the video are going to be a twist on the way we normally do things. I had the pleasure of attending the home opener in Jacksonville last weekend, brought my little camera with me, and got some up close and personal action of the officials narrating what we're supposed to see. So listen closely over the noise, you might learn something, including when must the arena music stop when the center touches the ball. We'll hear that announcement in here. So uh, here we go. Now let's watch the umpire spotted at the 12. The belt's a seven. He's going to point out the belt. See that? That's how you do it. Hold the point until the snap. Hold your position as long as you can. Here you right now, Jacksonville. He snapped at the 10. I'll give you 10 bucks if you guess what he's supposed to do. Snaps that on the Gary. To the goal line. Work back to the spot. Making a man on the stop. That is textbook goal line mechanics by a wing that snapped inside the 10. Again, snapped at the five. To the goal line. Work back to the spot. Got a bail. Oh my goodness! And back to the spot. So Zion Day. All right, goal line. It's fourth and four. Fourth and goal from the four. Tight play. The keeper. They got him short. Stopped at the goal line. There is a goal on the stop. Good four hustle. Down oh, that was fourth down. Okay, area. now it's fourth down. Now it's fourth and goal from the six. We gotta get to the goal line and we gotta crash. Once the center has touched the ball, it is a violation of league rules to play any synthetic sound or music from the loudspeaker. Once the center touches the ball, please cease all announcements, music, or fake crowd noise. Thank you. I ain't even say nothing. Yourself. 31 seconds left in the half. What are we going to do? We're killing it for a first down. And do you notice our headlines? Man, he looked up to the clock to make sure it stopped because we're under 60 seconds. So he killed it for the first down. We're holding things up. But if you noticed how he looked up to the clock 
to confirm that the clock operator, we're having a rough time with the clock operators here tonight. So uh, good job, good clock awareness there. Okay, it's fourth down, line the games with 10. Let's see if our H stops at the line to gain like he's supposed to. Contrary to normal goal line mechanics, the line to gain is more important here than the goal line. Stop and check. This one's gonna be close. Yeah, first down. Oh, they say first down. Easy. Boom. Hey, nice job getting in there between the players. That's what we want. It's getting chippy now, so that did not arise to the level of a foul. But hey, get in there between them. You saw it. Good job by the back judge. Snap from the minus 22. Look where our back judge lines up on the goal line. Checking his splits and is ready. He doesn't have to move. He stay right on the goal line. Look at that. And now hustle in, clean up. Interesting concept, following the mechanics. All right, we're snapped at the 20. Our back judge lines up on the goal line. Why? We're making it easy for him. He doesn't have to move. Picking up some trash on the field. Take a look at the splits. Remember, it's got to be big and jump out where we're talking. And look, he doesn't have to move. Pass. In position. Second down. How much you want to bet he gets a sideline warning at some point in this game? I told you he'd get a sideline warning. And we're only uh, 11 minutes to go in the second. Stay back, coach. Stay back. Now, next violation. What is it? That particular coach, no matter who it is, will lose their sideline for the rest of the game. But see, now the crew has that in their pocket. So, uh, coach should behave the rest of the game. Now, we notice we're in the third quarter and our coach is doing a really good job staying on the wall. See, the coach is behind the referee. That's where we want him. Sometimes you forget how loud it can be inside the arena. But uh, that's a wrap for week four. I know some of our officials are still <laughs> anxiously awaiting working their first game of the season. And they've got uh, four weeks of training tapes to rely upon, so they're going to go out and just hit a home run. Now, we know who's not watching tape when we see these mechanics not followed. you got to watch tape, and don't forget to take your quiz. It's due uh, April 15th. you still got a few more days. If you're working this weekend, what is the key word? Focus. Do that each and every play, and you should come out smelling like a rose. I'll talk to you next week. Thank you for your attention.